What's up guys, Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys our week 6 battle in NCL Season 8. We are taking on Pokefin in the Detroit Oblivion Wings. He is currently undefeated. And um, yeah, if you haven't seen the team builder, check that out. The only thing I changed is uh, close combat on Zerud to Drain Punch as per my good pal Mike's recommendation. And yeah, um, nervous as hell. Aromatis did come, Uxie didn't come. Kinda figured. Also the Zygarde, no Chan, which is good. Darkrai Rotom, so no Loma Molo is actually really good for me. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I brought a really offensive team, and I'm just gonna link the battle and mark it off like I normally do. But I brought a really offensive team for Pokefan today, and if you watch the team builder, you'll, you'll be able to figure out uh, why that is. Probably because I talk about it a lot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. He's got a really threatening team, and I don't match up super well against it, so that's why I'm uh, that's why I'm doing this. Now, a Rotom lead would probably be the worst possible scenario for me. I want to just lead Scissor, but a Rotom lead would be... Horrendous. Would he lead Rotom or would he lead Beedrill? I'm tempted to say he's going to lead Beedrill over leading Rotom. Because if I lead my Rotom, he's in a worse position. I'm just going to lead Scissor. I think it's my best lead. He leads Beedrill. Perfect. This is easily my best lead against Beedrill, <laughs> so we're clear, this is easily my best lead against Beedrill. Um, and I'm just gonna U-turn myself here. Um, as I imagine he U-turns into Celesteela, I can just get a U-turn off here. He's either U-turning into Celesteela or Rotom. Okay, so it's the Rotom, so we'll get our own U-turn off. 27, no Rocky Helmet. Rotom Heat. 27. This is pretty bulky. Now that we see that, I can possibly go into my Rotom Wash. And Toxic? Is that a bad play? I can go into my Rotom Wash and Toxic here. He should be threatened. And he doesn't actually have a Water Resist. It might be better for me to just Hydro. Hydro definitely kills this. Uh, if he went Zygarde... See, the thing for me is if he goes Aromatisse, then I'd rather Toxic. Um, so I'm going to Toxic. Just wear it down a bit. Aromatisse is a free Scissor which gives me a free knockoff this time, although that also loses me momentum. The goal of this game is to sort of gain momentum and keep it as long as I possibly can. He goes Zygar. Okay, perfect. Please hit, please hit, please hit, please hit. Awesome, 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 awesome. So this is, in theory, my Zygar answer anyways. Um, da, 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 da. It really sucks that they put it into... Like, I died abandoned arrows, is my thing. I think I just pump. I think I just pump. Skitter smack. So he was trying to catch the uh, Zarude. I forgot that it even got that, to be honest, but 32 from a minus one skitter smack. Now, let's, uh, let's just see the skitter smack damage here. Against my Rotom, it did 22.1, so that's about jolly damage, which is expected. And minus one pump did... 32, so this isn't bulky at all. How is that possible? This is regular Zygarde. This isn't Zygarde 100. I don't understand how that's possible. I'm not really sure. Um, Arrows is a fat roll against me now. He could be Scarf. Uh, I think I just pump again, actually. Okay, so Romatisse is in. I'm gonna Volt Switch on this. 
Um, I'd imagine this is going for a heal bell here, so I'm just going to get some momentum off. <sighs> Jeez. I can go into Infernape and start setting up. The Zygarde's in a range where I'd feel relatively comfortable setting up on it. Rotom, though. Rotom Heat. I don't have enough chip on the Rotom Heat. Uh, I could also go Gardevoir. 21. I'm going to calc this a little bit. So, minus one Hydro Pump. Did 21. It's a little bit bulkier on the special side. Not fully, though. Somewhere in between there. Um, I'm just going to go Hard Scissor. There's no reason not to. Throws up a wish. He's either protecting or swapping. Uh, I'm just going to U-turn anyways. In comes the Rotom. I maybe should have knock offed, but we can just go back into my Rotom. Which gets to Hydro Pump for free. And nothing wants to take this, so I'm just going to click it. Nice, there's the chip that we needed. He gets his Toxic off, which is really whatever. Um, having this thing, like, dead would be great, though. I, I really want a Volt Switch here, but I also just want to pump him in the face. There's the Aroma. Uh, I'm going to Volt Switch now. <laughs> As he throws up a Wish again, and then I'll probably go Scissor and click Knock Off this time. He might protect this time, actually. <clears throat> Which is fine. Because his Rotom is still chipped. And if he wants to click Wish again here, I get to go into my Infernape. <clears throat> 23. Okay, I actually do want to calc the uh, Scissor damage just to see exactly what's going on here. This looks physically defensive, like, almost fully. I mean... Anyone in the right mind could see that this is clicking Wish here, right? So I just go into Infernape. Does this stay in against me? I don't touch this thing. I need to swap. I'm swapping back into Scissor. With the Wish in the air, I need to swap back into Scissor here. Ah, okay. So he successfully passes it into Zygarde. I don't think this is bad for me. Um, I think I can just U-turn out again. This is not Choice Banded. But it's definitely, like, Jolly damage. Jolly Arrows doesn't touch me. I mean, worst case, he's hitting me with, like, Earthquake or, like, Scorching Sands burning me, which would be bad, but I just U-turn. I have no need to click anything else here. The Rotom is chipped to where I want it to be for Infernape. I wish that I had clicked Close Combat there. It might have killed the Zygarde, potentially. I didn't want to risk it against the Aromatisse, but then again, he was probably predicting, like, Flare Blitz or something. I'm not really sure how I want to play this now. Okay, so the Aromatis comes back in, takes another chunk. Now, at this range, I'd be more inclined to go into Infernape right away. Um, but are you in Shadow Ball range? You're not in Shadow Ball range. Are you in Gardevoir range? This is indeed in Gardevoir range, so I'm going to go Gardevoir, and I'm actually just going to click Thunderbolt. This is in Hyper Voice range. I just click Thunderbolt here, I think. Try and catch a Celesteela coming in. Perfect. 33. It's not what you want to see. 
So I'll steal a 33 from Thunderbolt. <sighs> impossible. It's a salt vest. It's assault vest, like offensive assault vest. I'm going Rotom. I'm going hard Rotom. I'm going hard, hard Rotom, and I'm clicking Volt Switch. The Zygarde coming in means nothing to me. 11 from Heavy Slam. It's not max attack. It's some weird variant. I'm, I'm clicking Volt Switch. The good news is the Celesteel can't switch into Gurvor again. Assuming I get the prediction right. So I've played this in a way where I'm getting the momentum and keeping the momentum, which is exactly how I wanted to play this because this matchup is really difficult for me. I don't think he goes Zygarde. He might, he might go Zygarde. It'd be kind of strange. If he does, I have to make a decision, and my decision is probably just going into Scissor. At a certain point, I really just have to like lock myself into Bullet Punch, right? But honestly, preserving... Uh, actually, hold up, because preserving Banded Bullet Punch is not bad here at all. What is that? Okay. I'm not really sure how he wants to play this. Um, Rotom did 26. Uh, Discharge might have been a little bit better there, but preserving, preserving a little bit of the HP. I, I need to keep Scissor a little bit healthy. Bullet Punch is 19 to 23-ish. Rotom Heat. 9 to 11, so I'm not killing that. Zygarde. Let's assume it's like this. 28 to 34. Thirty-two to thirty-eight. Beedrill should die outright. Dark Rye. Fat chunk. So I wanna preserve scissor. Maybe my play is going Infernape. This is a salt vest. There's no way he earthquakes, right? But he's seen Volt Switch. Maybe he heavy slams again? I'm not really sure what he wants to do here. But Infernape threatens this and it threatens other things. He earthquaked. That's such a strange play to me. I don't really understand that at all. It's definitely max HP. Uh, this is in range of close combat, no? Earthquake, 56 to 66. He did a little bit more, so we can assume that it's maybe like this sort of variant. No, he can't even be adamant. He's gotta be like a weird set here with like a little bit of attack investment, which means he's definitely not gonna be max defense. I can close combat here for free, I think. So unfortunately the set's not gonna work uh, how I wanted it to, but I can definitely close combat this. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. 49. I'm kind of getting the idea that this is Scarf Zygarde based on how he's been playing this. I kind of feel like this is Scarf Zygarde. And I did 49. So this feels like it's no bulk to me. Scarf Zygarde, I'm just gonna go hard Zarud, I think. Skitter Smack shouldn't even kill me. No, it doesn't. It does not. And what's he gonna be at? He'll be at 27 at the end of this turn. Um, which I guess means that I can Lariat the... Oh, hello. Aroma comes in. That's a rude aromatisse. I could whip here. I think I just U-turn though. I pretty much just U-turn into scissor. I think. 
No, you turn into Gardevoir. Right? No. Ha, ah, fuck. How do I do this? <sighs> you turn into Scissor. And knock off. Okay, I'm going Rotom now. Now that the AV is gone, I'm going Rotom. It's going to make my life a lot easier. Giga Drain. Yikers. And a half. I Volt Switch. And I'm going to Volt Switch into Zerud, I think. He could go Zygarde here. I think that's fine for me, though. This Aromatis being alive is a little bit obnoxious. A weird mixed set going on here. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Gardevoir being in after killing something means that Beedrill gets to come in for free, which is bad because it basically just means I give up my Gardevoir. But things are getting chipped. Things are getting chipped. Um, if the Celesteela gets chipped a little bit more, it'll be in range of Scissor. I, I have to imagine his last move is either a flying type move or flamethrower. If he goes Zygarde here, is it that bad for me? Like, I probably just sack something. And get in... Zarude? To just whip over? No. He goes Rotom. It's not terrible. 15. I could go Gardevoir. That sort of leads to the same scenario. Um, I think the best scenario for me, actually, is just going Pult. And I think I just clicked Shadow Ball. Alright, so we get a kill. Not a 6 0. Let's go. And we retain. The big important thing about this is that we've just retained momentum as well. By uh, by having Dragapult in, it'll either force in the Beedrill or the uh, Darkrai. Um, and I'm Colber for the Beedrill. Okay, so this is definitely Scarf Zygarde. Definitely Scarf Zygarde. I'm going hard Zarude on this. I am going hard Zarud on this. This is there's no way. This is absolutely Scarf Zygarde. Celesteela. I'm not that scared of you. Your max HP. But like Lariat's gonna two shot. I just Lariat. Why would he double there? That's strange. Anyways, I'm anticipating setting up my scissor endgame, so... Flamethrower is the last move, and he does not get a burn, which means I Lariat again. 40.7. I don't really need the health all that much on this. Um, uh, it's kind of important, right? Because I basically just have to keep sacking stuff to Zygarde. If I choose to do this, but uh, getting rid of the Celesteel is a lot more important. So 33 tells me there's like... This sort of level of defensive investment, uh, which means I'm not going to kill. So Roma comes back in. I'm just going to go Guard of War. There's the wish. And I'm not letting you heal up your Celesteela. No shot. Not letting you heal it up. No shot. I don't really mind if I let the Zygarde heal up. It's not going to be able to outright kill my Gardevoir anyways. He has a decision to make here, either sacking Selly or protecting and healing himself up. That's on him, though. Um, once this Celesteel is gone, my Scissor is in a fantastic position, so I just can't let it set up, or I can't let it get healed. Because uh, if it doesn't get healed, then Scissor just wins the game with a bullet punch. Beedrill. Okay. Beedrill, Beedrill, Beedrill. Para? No Para. So the Beedrill comes in. And the Beedrill is going to be able to get a kill. 
Uh, how do I want to play this? I think from his perspective, Flame Charge would have been better than Flamethrower, personally, but... Rotom still at speed, so does Infernape, but Infernape doesn't hit it as hard. I think I just sack Infernape. I think we sack Infernape here. Knocks off my Lum. We see that it has knockoff. Why would you do that, though? Jab was so free. I don't understand the knockoff play. I'm going to Flame Charge in case he chokes. He does not choke. He's going to U-turn into what? What is going to give me momentum here? He's probably Incinerate Darkrai, so I have to take that into account when I'm uh, playing around with Scissor. Celesteel is hella chipped. We'll see what uh, what he wants to do here. This is retaining my momentum. Like I said, I have to keep momentum. Otherwise, I just lose this game to the Beedrill. Um, my main strat here, uh, now that I know that it's Scarf Zygarde, I'm in a little bit of a weird spot because my main strat was basically to force the Beedrill uh, to knock off my, my Dragapult because it can't kill with anything else. And then I can Draco Meteor it in the face. But um, it's not a roll in my favor. Okay, Zygarde comes in, which means I go Zarude. Does it mean I go Gardevoir? It means I go Gardevoir. Thirty-two. I can go Gardevoir or Zarude. If I go Zarude, it's basically telling him that I'm Scarf Zarude, which I don't really want him to know. If I go Gardevoir. I tank any hit. <sighs> he's not going to be no bulk. Like, he'll have like 12 or um, 20 HP EV, something like that. So it's not a roll in my favor at all, uh, which means I need at least a little bit of chip on the fucking bead roll to kill, to kill it. Knock off after my colder has gone will kill me. Uh, okay, Gardevoir. Mega. I can go Gardevoir and I can Hyper Voice because I really don't give a shit about the Celesteel. I think that's my play. I go Gardevoir and I click Hyper Voice. Uh, or I can click Psychic, actually. Psychic is a bit better because there's no shot that uh, Darkrai is coming in here. There's no chance of it at all. And Psychic lets me catch the Beedrill if he wants to make a really risky move. He could Skitter Smack me as well. That could be his play here, is just to Skitter Smack me and kill himself. Pixel Leaped. I don't, I don't need the, the damage from that. I'm just going to Psychic. Iron Tail. Okay, well we're getting rid of the Scarf Zygarde, so that's good. Now, Beedrill or Darkrai could come in here. I'd be probably okay with either. I'm surprised that he even hit that, but um, was that a roll? What was that looking like? No, that was never a roll to kill me. Beedrill comes in, I'm just gonna Psychic. I'm gonna just sack this off. Does Zarud kill this with Lariat? I mean, really, I just go Scissor, right? And I U-turn, I think. <clears throat> He's got to be scared of, uh, of Bandit Bullet Punch, so... I think I just U-turn, really. He, know he should know that I'm Bandit at this point, and he should be scared. There's no reason for him to click knockoff here when this wins. And he knows that it wins. There's no reason. Yeah, perfect. Means I get my Dragapult in. Now, Pulp against Selly. Shadow Ball's not gonna kill. I can Thunderbolt. Um, I should Shadow Ball though, right? Fuck. No, I Thunderbolt. I Thunderbolt for sure. I need the HP on, uh, on Pulp to live the hit from Beedrill. 
I wish I had Sucker Punch on this now. Now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have had Sucker Punch over U-Turn on the Pulse, uh, so that I could have hit the Beedrill. Retaining momentum here. We are retaining momentum. The Aromatis is a little bit iffy, but once this dies, Banded Scissor is able to clean up the Aromatis and the Beedrill from full, no doubt, and the Darkrai will need a little bit of chip. So that is where Zarud comes in. That is where Zarud comes in. I just need him to sack Celesteela here. If he sacks this, then I'm in a great spot. If he goes Aromatis, I probably just try and kill it. He goes Darkrai. Four. It's kind of strange. This could be Scarf as well. 44 tells me this is like hasty? No, naughty? Naive, maybe? Something like that. U turn's not gonna kill Draco Wood. I'm just gonna Draco. It's a weird mix set, maybe with knockoff? I don't understand why you'd bring double scarfers against me. But he might be double scarf. He is in fact not double scarf, and so we're able to take out the uh, dark rye. And now Romantis comes in. I you turn into superpower. I think. Or I you turn into Rotom and discharge. How am I going to get out of this in a way that Celesteela is not living? This is obviously clicking Wish. I go into Scissor. And I click Superpower and it dies. Or I go into Rotom, which is the better play, I think. There's the Wish. And there's no shot that I am letting you heal your Zygarde. Okay, he heals his Aromatisse. Even better. Chooses to wish again. That's horrible for him. I'm gonna Toxic. I'm discharging again. I'm not letting you heal your Selly. Aromatherapy. Good, I die. I think. No, not. I don't die. I cannot let this thing heal up his Celesteela. I can't let it happen. I cannot let this heal up Celi. Uh, I would just lose if he heals Celi, I think. Because um, it should be able to handle Dragapult, which just means that I lose the game after that. Um, he doesn't have a Wish in the air. I think I go for Toxic or Discharge again. One of the two. I think I go for Discharge, and then I go Scissor and Superpower. Crit, nice, nice, nice. All right, he's got a Wish in the Air now. We go Scissor. And Superpower the Celesteal switch in. He fucking protected. He fucking protected. Wish protect aromatherapy. I'm going pulp. I'm going hard pulp. What? I'm U-turning then. What is this? Oh my god, I'm in such a bad spot now. I'm clicking it again. Oh my god! Staying in there when he died to Bullet Punch was really strange. He should still die to Bullet Punch. No, he doesn't. But there's no chance that it's his best play. Fucking kidding me? 44. Well, that really sucks. Uh, I guess I sack Pulse. I 
can't see what that Celesteel is at. I cannot see what the Celesteel is at. I I'm just going to put myself in a situation to bullet punch here. Um, if we get rid of the Beedrill, if the Celesteel comes in, I, I need to just sack Zarude. No? I, I go Zarude and I... And I Lariat, or, or what? Uh, Scissor, Celesteela... Flamethrower absolutely melts me. It's not modest, though, I don't think. Maybe we can get a better judge on the damage that it did to Rotom with Giga Drain. All the way back here, 40.3. From Wash, Giga Drain. Definitely not modest. In fact, it looks like zero investment. Scissor still does not live Flamethrower, and this is in no way close to being enough damage. Damage. Um, I have to go Zarude. I have to... Uh, this is all 50-50s at the end. This is so stupid. This is so stupid. I took out the Beedrill, but this stupid Celesteel is going to beat me. Okay, he actually just goes hard Aromatisse. Understand this play. I, I just U turn. There's the wish. And here comes the protect, I guess, which I just fucking. <sighs> Superpower on again. There's the protect again. I could just go hard Zarude this time. This is so stupid. There's the wish again. And the Lariat. Oh, please. <gasps> Are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. 27? He was Assault Vest Max? He's like relaxed Assault Vest. What is that shit? Oh my god. The Celesteel spread is just insane. <laughs> I'm making the same play for the fourth time. Let it work out, please! There's no chance this dies, though. Yeah, this doesn't this doesn't even die. He just gets back to half. There's no sense in even trying to superpower here, is there? This is so dumb. We're just going back and forth and he's just going to win 2-0 because of that fucking roll. I cannot believe he made the play this time. What? Why now? Of all times, why now? <laughs> You've got to be shitting me. This is such bullshit. <laughs> I just lariat. it. <laughs> Oh my god. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. No crits or anything, man. There's the defense boost. GG's. This was a horrendous matchup in the first place, and then he just plays like a maniac. I don't understand... Okay, first of all, knocking off with Beedrill makes zero sense. Okay, my poison resist is Dragapult, which is frail as shit. Um, unless he really thought that I was going hard scissor and didn't look at his team. Okay, that's the first one that made no sense to me. Okay, all of his plays with Aromatis, he has needed to pass a wish into Celesteela, and he has been winning 50 50s the whole time. That whole time he's been winning 50 50s. I'm going for the crit. Uh, no, no shot. Okay, well, whatever. That, that is just the dumbest way to end that game. I mean, props to Pokefan, I guess. Uh, I, I don't... I don't know. I, I don't know about that one. 
Uh, I was trying to position Scissor into a position for a win when I maybe should have been trying to position Dragapult into a position for a win. I threw away Dragapult at one point where it took like a billion damage from... What was it? Clicking a move. The Aromantis randomly clicking Moonblast when it was at like 30% or something. That was really strange. I definitely wish I had Sucker Punch on the Dragapult. Uh, over probably U-turn. I know I clicked U-turn a couple times, but I probably would have preferred Sucker Punch with that to hit the Beedrill a little bit better. So, whatever. 4 and 2 plus 8. I'm really disappointed with this one. This is a match we probably needed to win um, to advance the playoffs. We're halfway through the season now. 4 and 2. I need at least 3 of my next 6 games to be wins to make playoffs. I'm playing some really tough opponents. Next week we take on Lux in the Liu Harvard Glaze Lilligans. I take Nacho, I've got Mike, who is also at the top of the standings, I've got Torn, uh, who I've historically not done well against, Stu, who I've also historically not done well against, and Amish, who I've also historically not done super great against. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty stacked back half. Uh, Lux is someone who I've also not really done that well against in the past, so um, not super excited, but uh, hopefully you guys at least enjoyed the back and forth of this game, and I will catch you guys on the next one.